Welcome back everyone to Learning Medicine. Today we're in statics and we're going to solve problems 10.30 and also 10.31. It says, determine the moment of inertia for the beam's cross-sectional area about the x-axis, that's for my 10.30, and for my 10.31 we have determine the moment of inertia for the beam's cross-sectional area about the y-axis, okay? So let's just start by solving my problem 10.30. And what we have in this problem is that they're asking us to find the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis, okay? Now, the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis of this beam can be composed of the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis of each rectangular part, okay? So in order to do that, we're going to start by defining. So I'm going to zoom in and we're going to to start defining our parts. So I'm going to call this one one. I'm going to call this one two. And last one will be this one and this will be my third rectangle, okay? And the reason for this is that we can find each of the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis of these different parts. And at the end we add them up and then it will be the total uh, moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis of this cross-sectional area of this beam, okay? So what we can do is that uh, first we need to know that for a rectangle the moment of inertia is 1 over 12 multiplied by the base multiplied by the height cube. And this is only valid if our centroidal point of, on our part lands exactly on our axis. Now, in this case, none of them, so let's say, let's find the centroidal points for a rectangle will be exactly in the middle of all of them. Something like this. So as we can see, our neither our x, neither our y land on the centroidal points. So what we need to do that we need to take into account that and by taking how do we take that into account well we need to do something called the parallel axis theorem and what that parallel axis theorem says is basically okay so we're going to add the area of our part multiplied by the distance with respect to the axis now for the x-axis the distance will be in the y direction and we're going to square it okay so now that we know this Let's go for part one. So part one. And the moment of inertia for part one, what would it be? Okay, so if we're looking, we're in the x-axis and the x-axis is horizontal like this, then the base of my part one rectangle will be this one inch that goes from here to here. Okay, so that will be the base. So we got one over 12 of the base which is one inch the height will be three inches minus one that gives me two cube plus the area of that rectangle well we already know that the base is one and that the height is two so and then we multiply by the distance dy now what is that distance dy the distance is dy is basically the distance the y distance so let's zoom in really closing here will be the y distance from my x-axis all the way until my centroidal point. Now we know my centroidal point it's exactly in the middle of our rectangle meaning that if my height is 2 inches then in the middle will be 1 but we already have 1 from here and then another 1 going to our centroidal so therefore that distance is equal to 2 and that's the square okay so we're going to plot this into our calculator and we will find out that this is equal to 26 over 3 and this is in inches to the 4th power, okay? Then we can do the same thing and we're going to do the same thing for part 2 and what do we find? So we'll find moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis, same again, 1 over 12. Now, what's the base of these two? So, if we look, the base is from here to here for that second rectangle, meaning that our base is equal to 10 inches, 
and our height is equal to only one inch. We're going to cube that height. The area is again, we know the base is 10, the height is one, and the distance, well, let's zoom in back in again. And the distance from my x-axis to this point is only here, which is half of our one inch. So we got half of an inch. So we got 0 0.5, this is a five, is squared. Okay, we're gonna put this into our calculator and we'll end up that this is equal to 10 over three inches to the four, okay? The last part will be to do part three. And if we do part three, we have that the moment of inertia with respect to the x axis, one over 12. So one over 12, now it's the base. Well, the base is, again, one inch. So we got one inch. And what is the height? Well, the height will be this eight inches minus the, this part from here, from here to here, which is equal to one inch. So we got eight minus one, that will give us seven for our height. We're going to cube it. We're going to add the area, which is one times seven, and the distance. Well. Let's zoom in back in. And we know that if from here to here, this is equal to seven inches, right? So from here to here, then we know that from here, from, from, if we take from the bottom of our rectangle and we add half of that seven, which is 3.5, but let's recall that we also have one inch in here. So we'll end up with a distance of 4.5. 4.5 and we're going to square this one okay and we will end up with 511 divided by 3 okay so for my problem if we add them of these three parts so my total moment of inertia what is this equal to so we will find out that my total moment of inertia is going to be equal to 26 divided by three plus 10 divided by three plus 511 divided by three should be equal to 547 divided by three. Okay, now if we put this into decimal points, decimal numbers, we were going to put that this is 182.3 inches to the four, okay? So this is my answer for my problem 10.30. What we are going to do is that we're going to solve, start solving for 10.31. So what we're, let's start by copying our, our beaming here, our cross-sectional beaming here again, because we will need it. And we're going to solve for our problem 10.31. Now the difference is that now we need to do the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis, okay? Now the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis is going to be really similar, where we're going to have one over 12, and then we're going to have the base times the height cube, and this is because it's a rectangle, okay? This is given in the back of the tables on, on the book, so you can find this out, or you can find that out on internet, you, you actually put it on Google, like moment of inertia of a rectangle, you'll find out there is one over 12 base times high. But we need to take into account that neither my y axis, not, not, I mean, none of these lands on my centroidal points for this. So we need to take that into account and then we need to add the multiplication of my area times the distance and the distance is going to be given in the x direction. So, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do separate them by parts. And then if we do part one for our first part, what will we have? Well, we will have that our moment of inertia for part one is going to be equal to one over 12. What's the base? Okay. so. My axis is like this, is vertically. Therefore, my base will be this side 
on here for my part one, which is equal to three minus one is equal to two. And my height is equal to one inch. And then we're going to cube it. Then we're going to add the area. Well, we know already that the base is two, the height is one. And then what's the distance? Well, let's zoom in and find out what that distance is. So let's do this distance with um, blue. Now the distance from my y axis to that centroidal point is here, which is half of one inch. Therefore, that distance is 0 0.5 and then we're going to square, okay? So if we plug this into our calculator, we'll find out that this is equal to two thirds inch cubed. Then what we can do is that we're going to do the same, but for part two, and if we do the moment of inertia with respect to the y axis, we're going to have one over 12. Now, what is our base? Well, our base is, so we have, this is our axis and our rectangle two is this one. Therefore, the base will be this small section in here. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see better. It will be from here to here, which is equal to one inch, okay? So we got that the base is one inch, therefore the height should be equal to 10 inches. We're going to cube it. We're going to add the area. Well, we know base is one, height is 10, and the distance. Now what's the distance of that centroidal? So from with respect to the y axis, well, the distance should be from here to there. What is displayed in that blue line? we should be equal to half of those 10 inches, right? So if we do half of those 10 inches, that will be equal to five inches, and then we're going to square that. We're going to plug this into our calculator, and when we do that, we'll find out that this is equal to 1,000 divided by three inches to the four, okay? Last, we have to do part three. So for our part number three, we're going to do the same moment of inertia with respect to the y axis, one over 12. And then what is our base? Well, let's recall my y axis is like this. Therefore, my base will be in this direction and is equal to seven. So we got seven. The height is equal to one. We're going to cube that one and we're going to add the area which is the multiplication of my base times my height times the distance. Now, what's the distance between this point and my y-axis? That distance over here. Well, from here to here, we got, so from here to here, I'm sorry, a little bit beyond that, we got 10 inches, right? So we need to subtract half of this inch which is 0 0.15 in order to get into here. Therefore, our distance should be 10 minus half. So that should give us 9.5. And we're going to square it, okay? If we plug this into our calculator, this will give us 1,897 and we're going to uh, divide it by three. The last thing that we need to do to solve for 10.31, what we need to do is add the total. Where we're going to add these three parts together, these three moments of inertia. And therefore, our moment of inertia final is going to be equal to the addition of two thirds plus a thousand thirds and a thousand eight hundred and ninety seven divided by three as well. And if we add all these guys together, this will be equal to 2,899 divided by three. And if we put this into decimal points or into numbers, this will be equal to 966.3 inches to the four. And this should be our answer for our problem. 10.31, okay, so this is for 10.31. If you guys like the video, 
please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.